What's up to all my freelancers and creators out there? This is Nathan with another episode of Freelance Jumpstart TV. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about hourly pricing. I remember some time ago in my younger days, around the ages of 13 and 14, I was looking for a job. I found out it was best to get a job at the local McDonald's that was close to my neighborhood. So I applied and at the young age of 13, I got hired. To be honest, I was just happy to be working. The fact that I was actually able to make any type of income at that age while all my peers were at summer camp was cool. So I stayed there and worked there a total of about four and a half years. And through that time, I learned a lot of things. I felt like it was great. The fact that I always ate at McDonald's and I got to work here, it just felt like the perfect marriage of two things. Not only do I get paid, but I can eat all the free McDonald's food I want. So the first year I worked there, I was just getting the hang of things. And the next year, I just expanded my skills. So I did everything from take orders at the front counter. Then I also learned how to cook in the grill and make everything. I learned how to make lunch. I learned how to make breakfast. I learned how to make dinner. Uh, I learned how to restock the store. I learned how to report inventory on things that were low or missing or things we weren't accounted for. I learned how to open the store. I learned how to close the store. I learned how to work in the drive through which is completely different from working up front. Uh, and I learned how to clean up everything. So pretty much any job I could learn in the store, I learned it. Seeing how all those different skills work together fit me well because I'm a learner. I like to learn the different aspects of a job and then apply my skills in the area in which I had the most affinity or I just showed to be best at. So it just worked well for me. And I also realized that not only was it a good thing to know these skills, but it's really good to understand to do them well because there are certain people who caught on to things better than others. You know, there were some people who only stayed in the grill because they were not good at cashiering, they were not good at customer service, they were not good at anything else. So they only stayed in the grill or they only stayed in the drive through because they didn't have to have face-to-face -face interaction with people. So, but for me, I was versatile and I learned many different things. I became so versatile to the team, I remember being in high school and they wanted to promote me to manager. They wanted to promote a high school kid to manage all these other adults that I worked with because they saw how versatile I was. Of course, at the time, I was getting paid a little bit more than minimum wage. And as a middle schooler and then a high schooler, that seemed like, you know, a lot of money to me. And at the time, you know, compared to my friends who were making zero, uh, that was actually very good. And it was fitting for me for that time period. There was something about getting paid by the hour that I noticed when I was younger and I didn't really like. I didn't really like the fact that I was trading my time for payment because my time is not a good measurement of how valuable I am or how effective I am. If I was at the front counter taking orders and I was good at customer service and I was able to get, you know, 10 people through the line in five minutes while my coworker was able to get two people through the line and they messed up an order, why are we getting paid the same thing? It was then that I realized being paid by the hour was not the best evaluation and or appreciation of the value that I brought to the team. Sure, you know, maybe I might have been getting paid more, but how much more? 10 cents more an hour? 20 cents more an hour? A dollar more? How do you really weigh that in comparing two different people's efficiency levels? I share that story to realize a point that's still true today in the world of business and freelancing. There's nothing evil about getting paid by the hour. However, is that the best method to use to value your time. At least for me, when I was younger and I saw that, I felt penalized because the more efficient I got at my job, the faster I got at my job, it really didn't benefit me anything. And I was getting penalized for working better, quicker, or smarter. I tell that whole backstory to bring us to a point right here in which if you're a freelancer, creative, a consultant, you probably had a job in the past in which you were paid by the hour. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a pretty standard thing to do. You charge people for their time and we've gotten used to it. I know a lot of times when I work with clients, I'm asked two questions, either how much do you charge, flat fee, or you know what is your hourly rate? Those are the things that I'm asked up front and everyone's familiar with it. The first point in which I brought up in the story as it relates to hourly pricing is you're not necessarily rewarded for working faster or efficiently. 
So if you find a way to do it better, smarter, if something used to take you four hours, but you've gotten quicker and efficiency, or you've learned how to do it better and you do it in two hours, you get less money. Not only do you get less money, but it becomes more difficult to create a win-win for the client as well as you. You want to work on it and be rewarded for your time, but they also don't want to pay as much. So you have to try to balance between the two and figure out what works best. When it comes time to raising your rate, if you're doing hourly pricing, then you want to raise your hourly fee. But a question may come up or people may really start paying attention to the actual hourly fee you set. So maybe you're charging $50 an hour and you raise it to 75, 100, but you wanna make more money because you're getting more efficient. So then you say, you know what? I'm gonna charge 350 an hour or I'm gonna charge 1,000 an hour. People will start looking at that and say, that's too high of an hourly price because they're really comparing you to everyone else's hourly fee in their mind. So there'll come a point to where you wanna raise your rates but people start paying attention to that number when it gets too high. Just to follow up with the last point I just made, also you open yourself up to comparisons. So if someone says, I charge 75 an hour, and they say, I charge 80, people start looking at, well, you know, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but who should I go with? You know, they're similarly priced, which one is better? It doesn't necessarily represent the value you bring to the table. Sure, you need to have a portfolio. Sure, you need to tell them what you can do, but when it's only hourly price, then people start paying attention and comparing you based on price. Who knows? Is the $100 an hour person better than the $50 an hour person? That's definitely something to think about, but you open yourself up to more comparisons. Sometimes when you're working under an hourly price, you really feel like an employee. It may take your mind back to those days where you were trading time for money. And also the client may start looking over your shoulder and see, are you really spending time efficiently? Maybe something that took you, you know, two hours last month, this month you learn how to do it better and it only takes you 30 minutes. But then the next month you had ran into some difficulties and it took you two hours again. The client may start looking and saying, why is this fluctuating point of time? Are you really being efficient? And it can become a point of discussion and clarification between you and the client, but really they shouldn't even be paying attention to your time. The focus should be on did you complete the project and did you do a good job at it? Not how efficiently are you using your hours? That brings me to another point, which is what is actually billable? What can you actually bill for? In my experience in dealing with hourly rates and hourly pricing, you only really can bill for the time that you're working and producing towards the end of the project. There's so many things that come up such as answering client questions through email or answering them through phone calls, explaining certain things to the client, the meetings with the client that you may have to clarify, uh, keeping track of your hours and your time, you know, to have transparency at, into what you're doing. Not only that, but also the time it takes to invoice someone and type it up, make sure it's right, calculate your rate times the hours and send them the invoice. All of those things take time, but they're not necessarily billable hours. So you miss out on all the income that could be made from administrative tasks that contribute to the project, but are not directly related to producing the product. All in all, I told the whole story and just wanted to have this talk about the cautions of hourly pricing simply because of this. Hourly pricing is not evil. It's not going anywhere because people are used to it. And to be honest, I still use hourly pricing in my business. The thing I'm trying to communicate is this. You have to be wise and understand what the different pricing strategies are so that you can use them and apply them accordingly because every situation you can't give a flat fee every situation you can't use value-based pricing there are some times where you will have to use an hourly rate but you have to ask yourself what can you do to make sure the hourly rate is a win-win for you and the client that may involve telling the client hey i need to use this hourly rate but it only applies to a certain amount of time so i'm available for 75 dollars an hour but it's a minimum of two hours so at least you're protecting yourself, whether it may take you an hour and a half or even one hour. But you say, hey, it's a minimum of this amount and I'm available for that rate. Just following up on that point, another thing you can do is expand the amount of time that you're working. So you could say, I'm available for $75 an hour, but it's for 20 hours a week, or it's available for this amount of hours a month. 
That way you're still doing administrative tasks, but since the billing cycle is expanded, there's more income coming in and you don't have to do it as often as far as invoicing every week. You know, you're just invoicing for the whole month or the whole week instead of daily. So that's just another thing you could do when it comes to hourly pricing. As always, thank you for taking the time to check out this particular video. Uh, we've been on a series on pricing. So we talked about pricing strategies. Here we're talking about hourly billing. And the next video, we're gonna get into, you know, how I effectively made a certain amount of money hourly, but I gave the client a choice. So I'll get into that pretty much in the next video. Uh, for now, as I mentioned, if you want notes to this particular episode, I do show notes every episode. You can go to the link right here and you can read all about the story more in depth and the particular points that I made and the pros and cons of each point. It's been good getting to talk with you and I will catch you in the next video. See ya.